find all zeros of p of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 11x plus 15. So let's write down our possible rational zeros. This is just a place to start. Not, my zeros do not all have to be rational. But I take the factors of 15 and I divide by the factors of 1. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 15. I'm going to um, use Descartes' rule of signs to test to see how many possible zeros I could have. So I write the original, x cubed minus x squared minus 11x plus 15. I look for variations in sign. I have 1, 2, so I know there are 2, or 0, positive, real, zeros. If I look at the other case, plug in p of negative x and look for variations. Remember that you change all of the signs of x's with odd powers. So this is an odd power, x cubed and x, both those signs will flip. So I have a positive x cubed here, it becomes negative x cubed minus x squared plus 11x plus 15. I look for sign changes. There is one sign change. So that means there's one negative, negative, real, zero. I also plug in P of zero, see if that is a zero, because remember if you're gonna classify numbers in terms of their signs, there are three cases. You have positive numbers, you have negative numbers, and zero. So here's the third case. If I plug in zero, I get zero for all of the X terms and 15 here. So zero is not a zero. Okay. So this narrowed it down a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and try one. Remember, you always wanna check your powers and make sure they're in descending order, three, two, one, zero, before you try synthetic division. So I have one, negative one, negative 11, and 15. I'm gonna try just positive one, I guess. That's a good place to start. So I bring this down and get a one. One times one is one. Negative one times positive one is zero. One times zero is zero. Negative 11 plus zero is negative 11. One times negative 11 is negative 11. 15 plus negative 11 is four. So that one doesn't work. Let's try something else. I'm gonna go ahead and try positive three. One, negative one, negative 11, and 15. So I bring this term down, I get a one. Three times one is three. Negative one plus three is two. Three times two is six. Negative 11 plus six is negative five. Three times negative five is positive, I'm sorry, is negative 15. And negative 15 and positive 15 combined to give me zero. So three is a zero. Three is a zero. So this said I had two or zero positive real roots. That means I will have one more real root. It doesn't have to be a rational number though. So let's go ahead and look at P again. If three is a zero, that means X minus three is a factor. So I'm gonna rewrite this in terms of its factor, x minus three. And I'm gonna use this last line to write the rest of it, the other um, term to multiply with. So this was x cubed, so this will be x squared, one x squared plus two x minus five. Notice that this term is quadratic. Anytime you get down to something that's quadratic, you wanna to try to factor it or solve with the quadratic formula. Um, you can continue synthetic division if you want to, but synthetic division test the um, rational zeros, and you may not have a rational number here. I'm gonna go ahead and do um, quadratic formula. So x, if I'm looking at x squared plus two x minus five equals zero, that means x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared minus four times one, okay, times one times 
negative 5 all over 2 times 1. So this is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 20 all over 2, which is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 2. 24 is not a perfect square, so I cannot pull it out of that radical, but it does have perfect square factors. So you can do this several ways. You can think of factors of 24 that are perfect squares, or you can factor it completely down to its prime factors. So this is 24, which is 6 times 4. Whoops, sorry. 6 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. 6 is 2 times 3. So x is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 all over 2. If we have a square root, we can only pull terms out of a square root if there are two of them. So I can circle this pair and remove it as a single 2. So this is negative 2 plus or minus 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. And what's left? 2 times 3, 6. So I have negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 2. Notice there are 2's in both terms on top, so I can divide every single piece by 2. Negative 1 plus or minus square root of 6. So my zeros are 3, negative 1 plus square root of 6, and negative 1 minus square root of 6. Okay. That's it.